Okay, now that you have gone ahead and entered all your scoring system parameters, now it's time for you to run the draft analyzer. You can do that through three different places. First one, tools, draft analyzer. Second one is this black button in the middle, access our winning analyzers below, choose the draft analyzer. Or you can go to the My Rosters tab, and if you click on that, you'll see the team that you've created, and there's a draft analyzer button there. You can choose any one of these three. They will all take you to the same place. You click on that, and that takes you to your draft analyzer setup page where it's got your scoring system and the team, in this case, Thrashers. You choose that, and that takes you to the draft analyzer setup page. Now, on this page, you can go back and you can view the scoring system, but you've already entered that. So now it's going to ask you how many teams are in your league, and using the drop-down bar, you choose how many teams. If there's 10 teams, 8 teams, 6 teams, 16, whatever it is you choose, for this example, I'll choose 12. Now, how many rounds are in your draft? Standard fantasy football draft is 16 rounds, so I'm going to select that. But if you have 12 rounds, 20 rounds, doesn't matter, you would choose that. Now, it's automatically imported the minimum starters required for your lineup for each position that you entered previously, and now you've got to choose maximum players allowed by position for your roster. Now we've set up a simple default, and if you click that, you'll see that it automatically fills in to match 16 rounds. You've got two quarterbacks, six running backs, five wide receivers, one tight end, one kicker, one defense. That adds up to 16 rounds. You can change that to whatever you want. You want to have three quarterbacks instead. You can go ahead and put that in. But make sure that you take someone out from another position if you do that. Or if you prefer just having the two quarterbacks and you're thinking that you're going to draft one backup tight end, you can reset it that way as well. Now, this next line is allow tight ends to be used as wide receivers. If tight end is not a mandatory position in your fantasy football league, but they are considered as wide receivers, you go ahead and leave the check mark in there. If they are a totally separate position and you have to start a specific tight end, then you go ahead and you take the check mark out. This next one, show players not expected to be drafted. It all depends whether or not you want to see all the players or just those that the system is going to recommend based off of these settings right here. For example, if you leave this check mark in here and you have two quarterbacks and there are 12 teams in your league, it's all going to list only the top 24 quarterbacks. For running backs, five running backs and 12 teams, it's going to list only the top 60 running backs, etc., etc. I always like to see all of the players listed, so I always leave the check mark in there. Beginning draft week, most drafts begin in week one. This is here in case you've got a mid-season redraft, say like as though you've got a redraft after week number seven, you will go ahead and choose week seven and run it to the end of the season. You can also change what end draft week you want. But for this example, we're going to assume that it's the very first one of the season. So beginning draft week one, end draft week 17, and let's go ahead and run the raw data analyzer. You click that button, and it's going to take a few seconds for it to pull up the value-based draft board that is created based off of your inputs for your scoring system. You'll notice here, draft analysis for your fantasy team thrashers, and you can see here, these are the week-by-week -week strength of schedule graphs. Each one is explained here. Also, you've got printable versions for each of these different positions in the tier sheets and the stat totals. For example, the printable version of the value-based draft board, you click on that and that's going to pull up a new window and it's going to list all the quarterbacks in order, their position rank, how many fantasy points, and the graph here. You can hide the graph as well. Show hide strength of schedule graph, click on that, and that makes the graph go away. Click it again, and the graph comes back. It's that simple. Now if you go back over here and you select the tier sheets, you want to see the tier rankings for each position, click on the tier sheets link. And that'll take you to the tier sheets where it lists the tier number for each player, the player, their fantasy score, and their bye week on there. If you're interested to know what the stat totals are for every player, click on the stat totals link. And that will show you the passing attempts, the pass completions for the quarterbacks, all their projected stats for the season, and also the tier ranking for that player. 
Now this page can also be sorted a couple of different ways. This overall list, which is the value-based draft board, you can set it up by position. You can go ahead and sort it by the player name. You can do it by the fantasy score. You can do it by, by all these different things. You can also compare players. If you'd like to compare players, let's say you'd like to compare Adrian Peterson with Stephen Ridley, you put check marks in there, and then you click the compare button. And what this will do is this will pull up just those two players and show you what they've got going there. Now you can also, and we'll go back, you can also see the player cards. Player cards are accessed by clicking anywhere over here in the strength of schedule graph. Click in there, and that will pull up Adrian Peterson's player card. Just expand that out. You'll see that I've got a comment and analysis on Adrian Peterson. You'll see the graph there showing his fantasy points and his projected stat totals for every week of the season. Go ahead and close that out. And this is your value-based draft board showing everybody here. When you're actually doing your fantasy draft, you can either use this online during the draft or you can print up the, the cheat sheets. Printing up the cheat sheets, if you're going to print up the, uh, the cheat sheets for the value-based draft analyzer, I highly recommend that you hide that strength of schedule so that way you are not getting the big graph over here on the side that eats up a lot of printer ink. However, if you're going to go ahead and use it for part of an online, you can just go ahead and have it there. For the tier sheets, I always print mine up direct from here. I just print the whole screen. Ignore this gray shaded area. You see this gray shaded area? Just ignore that. That is something that we used to have configured into the system. Now, let's say you're doing an online draft. If you're doing an online draft and let's say people are starting to come off the board, you can go ahead and put a check mark in there and then remove player. As each player is selected, that'll shade out the player from the overall value-based draft board here and also it will remove that player from the printable versions. So you can then go into the running backs and you'll see that Adrian Peterson is not listed here. Doug Martin is the next highest player. Also, it'll do the same thing on the tier sheets. If you go to the tier sheet, Adrian Peterson disappears from that. And every time someone is drafted, you just go ahead and say next pick was Doug Martin, remove player, Scroll down, let's say the next one was Arian Foster. Remove player. And again, you'll see that if you re-click on the tier sheet link or the printable version, those players have now disappeared from your sheet. So that way you can keep track of it while you're doing your draft online. Now let's say, for example, that you accidentally clicked on somebody that you didn't mean to take out. Let's say that instead of Arian Foster, it was supposed to be Jamal Charles. Click on the box again, add player back. And that will bring Arian Foster back into, maybe I got to click it again. There we go. <laughs> and you'll see that Arian Foster has been added back here. And then if you go back into the tier sheets, Arian Foster is back in there where he was before. And that's how you use the draft analyzer for your fantasy football drafts.